S1, Q3, T3 is the characteristic feature of pulmonary embolism. Now, uh, uh, 59 year old, a cardiovascular respiratory G8 in neurological examination is performed. No finding is found except during auscultation there is a systolic murmur and the 2D echo has been done. So, what do you see in the 2D echo during the systole and diastole? Typically, the anterior and posterior leaflet of the mitral valve is prolapsing back towards the left ventricle. So, that is a classical story of mitral valve prolapse. So, mitral valve prolapse, diastole, there is a coving. Systole, it is uh, throwing itself back. It is not supposed to throw back into M, uh, LV. So, that is the reason there is, because of that, there will be a regurgitation. So, because of the regurgitation, what do you get? Because of the regurgitation, you get a, what is the murmur of multiple, mitral regurgitation? Systolic murmur. So, that, because of that, you get systolic murmur. And there is a, um, because of this uh, cooing of uh, these uh, chordae tendinae, there is a sound which is called mid-systolic click. So, it is a case of mitral valve prolapse which is called Barlow syndrome is what you have to basically remember. Now, a 60 year old man presents to the accident and emergency with an increasingly severe chest pain and it is being radiating towards the shoulder blades and the chest x-ray is showing widening of the mediastinum along with the hemorrhagic pleural effusion. It is not showing hemorrhagic pleural effusion, it is showing effusion. If you tap, it will be hemorrhagic, right? Huh? So, uh, then, uh, so what is the most likely cause? Aortic dissection is the one which you need to basically clinically suspect. Clinically suspect. Right? So, I think once more breaking. Okay. Right. You do one thing. Na? Meanwhile, you check that uh, settings in the uh, server. Le le let's continue. But meanwhile, you check the settings in the server. Now, a 49 year old man is rushed to accident and emergency. Last question, we finish the discussion, right? Complaining of 20 minute history of severe crushing chest pain and after giving glyceryl trinitrate, um, uh, he is able to tell you he suffers from hypertension and uh, he is allergic to aspirin. So, what is the most appropriate management in this given case? So, fundamentally, he is a case of angina. In angina, anyway, you need to introduce mona, morphine, oxygen, nitrates and aspirin. So, if the aspirin sensitive individuals, what do you want to give? Clopidogrel is the next option which is available for you. You are being called by a nurse complaining of lightheadedness and palpitations and the oxygen saturation is 97% and you are able to palpate a pulse but unable to find the radial or carotid and uh, the ECG has been given to you and uh, what is the ECG showing? Typically, it is showing a ventricular fibrillation, which typically presents like a pulseless state. So, that is a classical ECG of ventricular fibrillation. 44 year old plumber has a 4 day history of fever with generalized myalgia. C-reactive uprodin is 90, ALT is typically raised, chest x-ray is being shown to you. What is it showing? Bibacillar infiltrates. It is showing. So, which pneumonia is very well known to lead to more of systemic clinical features? See, uh, you can see generalized myalgia, fever, dry cough and uh, oxygen saturations are not much affected. But WBC count is elevated with a high neutrophil count uh, along with liver dysfunction. So, that is a classical feature of Legionella pneumophila, Legionella osis with bibacillar uh, patches is a classical feature. Now, uh, 
a 44 year old diabetic patient CD is being shown to you and uh, um, there are also some organisms which are grown on culture looking at the pattern of the CT where you are finding multiple infiltrates along with uh, the typical organisms you conclude that it is a aspergillosis so what is the treatment of choice for aspergillosis systemic aspergillosis amphotericin B is considered to be the treatment of choice the treatment of choice a 56 year old man attends your clinic with a three month history of a productive cough and blood tinged sputum and the associated symptoms are lethargy and night sweats and decreased appetite is it changed there? no? ok um, now a sputum sample is being sent and uh, from the list below what is the most likely organism? acid pass bacillus typically is TB so ideally if this question is answered by anybody wrong they should give three years of uh, ban in uh, <laughs> need PG there is nothing like that without even seeing once the TB bacillus in the microscope uh, we all joined MD we treated thousands of uh, final year MD exam just before exam uh, our examiner cautioned the external examiner coming for MD general medicine is a very conventional examiner he will put you to microscope at least you should have common sense to recognize the acid pass bacillus so some old examiners in our days it used to be like that they will start in his days how he was with no one knows because all his congeners are already dead uh, uh, so but luckily that's the reason those in our days it used to be like that examiners are no more there in DNB DNB are all young smart guys okay boss do you know have you done good work all right let me check some few basics will you kill or survive patient if you answer few basics they will say chala pass go run so that kind of new examiners are there that's the reason DNB is as good as MD unlike old days may very sadistic examiners used to be there even if he doesn't like the uh, ironing of your apron also he can ask you to kick off right so that's the reason but if you have not even cleared dnb let me tell you the prognosis is very 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 bad in the neat pg benchmark is june if you are cleared dnb you are sure to get in December need PG right but you have not even cleared you have to work a little hard that is the meaning of that it is not that you won't get but the only thing is suppose you have rank 30,000, 40,000, 60,000 in DNB mein, June ka session mein. December once more exam is there all guys who clear DNB are once more going to compete you in the need PG so you can't expect a miracle to happen unless you miraculously studied next six months right that is the goal so now doc um, what are the diagnostic criteria of ARDS um, of the ARDS so there are certain criteria which have been set in ARDS uh, acute onset bilateral infiltrates pulmonary capillary budget pressure less than 19 what does pulmonary capillary budget pressure basically uh, indicate uh, it indicates the pressure in the left atrium so what is ARDS ARDS is a pulmonary edema which is non cardiogenic in origin so how do you know whether it is a cardiogenic or non cardiogenic if it is cardiogenic left atrial pressure will increase and pulmonary capillary budget pressure will be more than 19 if it is less than 19 then only it is non cardiogenic then only you call it as ARDS is what need to be remembered now a 69 year old presents with two week history of abdominal pain and uh, it has worsened in the last few days patient is jaundiced and the abdomen is distended and there is a shifting dullness and the MRI is being shown to you what is MRI basically showing you this is called isolated hypertrophy of caudate lobe 
isolated hypertrophy of caudate lobe. Do you think uh, board check? If it is stopping, once more go to 2D view. Hmm? What is the difference in the blood flow of the all other lobes of the liver versus caudate lobe of the liver? What is the uh, primary difference is a very important question. So, you have the intestine from that the mesenteric vein and uh, the splenic vein combine to form portal vein and that supplies the liver. In the liver, you are having hepatic sinusoids. Is it breaking? Breaking? Fine? Okay. And from this comes the hepatic vein. And that goes and drains into inferior vena cava. Inferior vena cava. So, what is Bacheri syndrome? Obstruction of hepatic vein. That means the venous drainage of the liver is drainage of the liver is blocked. Then only caudate lobe has got a direct connection with IVC. It does not depend on the hepatic vein for uh, the drainage. Now, whenever the uh, blood is, uh, whenever the hepatic vein is blocked, entire liver will take over the uh, collaterals will develop into the caudate and through the caudate the drainage occur into the IVC. Into the IVC. Give a focus to the board. So, entire drainage occur into the IVC. So, uh, that is the reason the caudate lobe become specifically enlarged. Then, if you happen to pass the angiogram and do the contrast study, hepatic angiography, then all these collaterals will look uh, like a mesh. And what is that? Uh, called a spider web appearance. Spider web appearance on hepatic angiography is a feature of the uh, Bacheri syndrome. And second important feature is the caudate hypertrophy is another important feature of Bacheri syndrome. Now doctor, um, Gopal is a 19 year old man with a history of transient jaundice. He has no other symptoms. Full blood count is normal, ready count is normal, only isolated hyperbilirubinemia is there. So, what is the most appropriate management for him? Whenever no other LFT is altered, SGOT, SGPD, alkin, phosphatase, nothing is altered. Isolated hyperbilirubinemia is there in anybody. Typically following fever or exercise or starvation, then you need to think of Gilbert syndrome. So, there is nothing that you need to basically do for Gilbert. Right? You can just reassure and discharge the patient. And a very good number of Gilberts exist in your OPD. When you sit in medicine OP and uh, evaluate the patients regularly. 54 year old woman, Lakshmi, with a weak history of jaundice and a right upper quadrant abdominal pain. And uh, her LFT reveals a bilirubin of 40, AST, ALT being given. And uh, there is a history of weight loss and uh, it is associated with uh, symptoms including dark urine and pale stools. Obviously, there should be some obstruction. And ultrasound is showing a stone with uh, the shadow, acoustic shadow. That is a classical story of gall stone. Lallu Prasad is a 29 year old from Patna undergoes a sigmoidoscopy because of a long standing diarrhea and the mucosa is uh, friable and microscopic examination is showing 
what is this called as crypt abscesses so crypt abscess is a feature of ulcerative colitis so there is one table no batti marne wala table so that you have to invariably review master keep in mind and basically go then uh, typically there are various antiplatelet agents which is the one which is gp2b3a inhibitor tirofiban so typically it is the tirofiban is the drug a right did we give the tirofiban in this yeah tirofiban is gp2b3a inhibitor clopidogrel where does it act dipyridimol where does it act aspirin where does it act you will remember me in exam hall doctor after writing exam and coming tell me if there is no question on heparin or antiplatelets probably um, you have not taken neat pg by mistake you went for some other exam samjho in variably there will be a question on heparin and similarly antiretroviral drugs every drug you should be good similarly anti diabetics and insulin in variably one question will come so such invariable topics if you take there are a list of about 400 topics out of 600 total topic list all of you are having topic list so those who didn't have the topic list we do analysis of every question which topic it belongs and maximum questions came from where and we arrange them in descending order we do like a research professor we do reverse engineering on the question bank of the dnb guys so they will be they have no other option based on their pattern so the reason you must know focus probably you can say hey i forgot to study that mycology part of microbiology i was never liking that mycology you can possibly say that but you can't say hey i forgot to study about which is alpha hemolytic beta hemolytic which is uh, uh, no bias and sensitive resistant which is uh, bacitrus and sensitive resistant all those things must be there on the tip of your nose sneeze and come in the exam hall right if you miss that there are n, n number of people ready to sneeze you out of competition right so that should be spirit so now two types of enzymes competitive and non competitive inhibition is being uh, given to you so you should be quite sure the curve a depicts competitive whereas curve b depicts the non competitive inhibition so typically will the inhibition affect the vmax or the inhibition affects the km value what is km value the substrate concentration at which the half maximum velocity is being achieved so based on that you decide whether it is a competitive or a non competitive inhibition there is a lipidosis and the lipid laden macrophages in the spleen which is a very very classical feature of neiman pick disease which is due to sphingomyelinase deficiency is what you need to basically remember 8 year old has undergone emergency surgery for intestinal obstruction due to obstructed hernia and uh, on auscultation of his chest there is a reduced air entry and coarse crackles in the right lung base and typically the chest x ray is showing the right sided uh, lower lobe involvement which is classical of aspiration pneumonia so it's a typical post operative aspiration pneumonia x ray is what you have to basically remember then uh, 57 year old with umbilical hernia and uh, he has got a child's a classification of surgical risk then uh, how do you differentiate child's a from b from that of the c a is minimum risk b is moderate risk c is advanced risk child puke classification what do you have banana b for bilirubin a for albumin n for neurological states a for ascites right so banana so in that based upon the values you grade it as a b and c and uh, if you know this table you will answer it if you don't know there is not much to guess right shruti is asking sir where is the 400 topic list hurry you call our uh, helpline people they'll be more than happy to send you a pdf right of uh, you should not read more if you read more than 300 words 
in spite of attending coaching with us my soul will be heaving in graveyard restlessly are ye kya ho gaya ha itna padhai kiya itna padhai nahi karna if you are reading more remember you won't get seed if you reading too less also you don't get the seed optimally you should read be sure on that right four five hours a day for 100 days oh you will get top 100 mein aa jate four to five hours a day 100 days you don't need more than that right uh suppose if your marriage is fixed in september or october better marry finish the honeymoon and then come down and 10 hours a day 50 days padho right four five hundreds hours say if you require more number of time means uh, it's a waste thing that you are reading right so there are there are that uh, please go through that 5 600 uh, topic list please call our helpline 24 year old sustained a deep laceration in the palm and in this distribution colored pattern it is a distribution cutaneous innervation of radial nerve so typically it is a radial nerve injury is what need to be remembered a 40 year old admitted for the excision of lipoma and he started complaining of light headedness numbness of the tongue and speech became slurred after giving anesthesia so what is the most possible cause it is a classical story of local anesthetic toxicity and um, because there is uh, a systemic absorption which has happened and that will have an effect on cns and cardiovascular system is what need to be remembered now a 40 year old is recovering from cholecystectomy and on day 2 her oxygen saturation is 85% so day 2 is the most important thing that gives you a clue that it is a case of atelectasis so whenever you do cholecystectomy you are operating on the abdomen whenever the abdomen is being uh, operated abdominal movements are affected so adults is it is all what type of respiration abdominal thoracic respiration so when that get impaired the ventilatory movements of the diaphragm are impaired and that predisposes to atelectasis and the atelectasis and the collapse of the alveoli is the most common cause for the development of the respiratory distress on the day 2 after the surgery so that is very very important now a 90 year old is being admitted ph is 7.2 acidosis is there then pseo2 is 67 hypoxia is there then pseo2 is 28 not much elevated then bicarb is 18.7 so that typically says it is a case of metabolic acidosis due to a low bicarb along with uh, um uh, acidotic acidotic uh, state at the same time um, it is a compensated state of metabolic acidosis so how does a compensation of the metabolic acidosis occur metabolic acidosis may bicarb is exhausted so what is your volatile acid in the body carbon dioxide right so whenever metabolic acidosis is there you will try to have kusumal breathing etc and try to get rid of the co2 that's how the co2 levels will come down so it's a typical compensated metabolic acidosis once more in the dnb general medicine discussion of the last 15 years in the video library there is a 20 minute discussion on the topic of acid based disturbances what are the questions asked in dnb how to remember compensated uncompensated how to decide whether it is a metabolic acidosis alkalosis etc so please review that video then 65 year old women and uh, intermittent constipation she has rebound tenderness and wbc count is elevated what is the most important uh, uh, step about her so you need to do a hartman procedure um that uh, it will result in a end colostomy which is basically a reversible procedure so as a immediate uh, uh, rescue in case of acute uh, obstruction with a malignancy if you want to bypass the see whenever colon cancer is there the 
cancerous mass is causing obstruction. Ideally, what you need to do, you need to remove the mass and then create anastomosis. But in acute state, you can't do that. Any other tumor can have a contraindications for doing a surgical intervention. But what is an exception? Colon cancer, whatever be the stage of it, you have to surgically intervene. Obviously, no. If the um, uh, it's a foot tract, right? So you need to cut, remove it, close the lower end like a blind pouch, and open the upper end like a stoming. So that's what you need to do. And after that, you need to gain some time and then do a definitive anastomosis. So that's the typical Hartman is a um, procedure of choice in case of acute intestinal obstruction due to malignancy. Now, the lesion of the cervix shown in the histopathology, what is the conservative management of this lesion? What are the options which are available? It is a classical story of a high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. And uh, we do laser ablation, large loop excision, conization. They are all the options which are basically available. Now, what is this method of tubectomy? Remember, doctor, you will remember me in exam hall once more. Pomeroy versus Uchida versus Parkland versus all these uh, tubectomy procedures are there, no? At least psychologically, you should understand what they are doing. What has to be done in a tubectomy after all? Fallopian tube has got a end towards uterus, other end is open. You have to cut it. Once you cut, what are you going to do? The middle piece you removed it and then buried the two into the underlying momentum or you have tied and then kept it. So, accordingly different different styles of uh, tailoring uh, people do. And there are advantages, disadvantages, failure rates. So, in this country called India, without a question on tubectomy, paper nahi rahega. Without a question on con contraception, paper nahi rahega. It is standard areas hai. So, if you have done this question wrong, how many have done this question wrong? Please help me. Don't say all of you have done right. It is possible all of you might have done right because you all know only Pomeroy. Huh? So, you might have uh, betted on uh, a known known rather an unknown known. Huh? So, Pomeroy technique is a loop of the proximal portion of the tubal ampulla is elevated. And a strand of absorbable suture is being used to bilaterally ligate the tube and etc, uh, etc. Et now, false statement about the bone tumor, whose histology? In histology, you are seeing osteoid formation. And typically, you are seeing the sunray appearance and elevation of the periosteum, which is a feature of osteogenic sarcoma is what you have to basically remember. Then, you are seeing the intraaortic pressure gradients. Uh, before and after treatment. One is aorta, other is left ventricle. Between the two, if there is a high gradient of pressure, which normalized after you have done the procedure. So, one is ventricle, ventricular pressure is, other is aortic pressure. There is not much of gap. Here, there is a large gap. Right? The ventricular pressure has to elevate a lot to push the blood into the aorta and create a pressure in it. So, during the systole, the pressure gradient between the two is very high. So, when will that happen? When there is a tight aortic stenosis, that is what you need to basically appreciate. So, it is a classical uh, pressure tracing. See, there are two things. Got the point? Got this question? One is ventricular tracing beta. One is, the this is the pressure inside the ventricle. Sorry, in the aorta. And this is the pressure tracing in the aorta. Aortic pressure has, uh, this is the pressure tracing ventricle, sorry, the upper one. The upper one left ventricle pressure has to rise a lot to push the blood into aorta, so that the aortic pressure also elevates. But the pressure gradient between the two is very high. Normally, the amount of rise of pressure in the ventricle and the rise of pressure in the aorta will be very more or less similar in a normal person. But if there is a tight stenosis there, to push the blood into the aorta and rise its pressure, the ventricle has to rise a lot 
and that makes it a aortic stenosis uh, pressure tracing samajh mein aaye sure ha in the paper two top are sure how many feel very tough ek kya hai sir ha image based bol ke wo upar wale neat pg bol diya bol ke aap band baja rahe ha so see the point is image based questions are very easy to crack easy to crack uh but uh, problem is uh, you should know the gist what examiner is looking for if you know that 2 minutes it doesn't take much time to crack hmm? now this is the plain ct scan of a male who has sustained an injury with the baseball bat so what do you have extradural hematoma an extradural hematoma is a arterial bleeding and typically there is a lucid interval is what you have to basically remember and uh, middle meningeal artery is the one which is commonly injured leading to the development of this arterial injury now what is this potato tumor rhinophyma once for a straight pick from the 2016 appg now patient has got a muscle weakness lesion which is being shown in the figure what is this called gotrens papules and what is this called heliotrope rash which is a feature of polymyositis and dermatomyositis and in that the anti jovan antibody positivity is an important indicator of the proclivity towards development of uh, arthritis is what you have to basically remember so facial hypertrophy is a feature in von reckling or in fibrous dysplasia etc not in pendred pendred is what hypothyroidism right then a 32 year old driver with painful inguinal lymphadenitis right which is typically uh, a step sign is a feature of lymphogranuloma venerum so doxycycline is considered to be the treatment of choice in this given case right sikindramath is asking a question why it is not torsidis depointus in the earlier question sir ventricular fibrillation is there no i know you will all confuse you should confuse bolke diya you thought that uh, middle middle spindles are there but that is uh, patient is pulseless right and uh, it is not that uh, constant polymorphic vt appearance you also need to take the other part of the history into consideration along with the ecg right but actually torsidis de point is also ultimately becomes vf become vt becomes vf right so there is a scope but the spindles are little bigger in shape qrs complexes here there is almost almost like a tooth kind of a pattern is there in the tcg so it's a good question at least while composing the question i thought a zarur puchega you will fight for this question bolke ha huh? yeah a butcher develops a tender purple red plaque on the right hand right then uh, it is a ca case of uh, um eris pelloid which is a acute cellulite is caused by um uh rusiopathica um ersip 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 patrix rusiopathica hmm? 34 year old homosexual carpenter from mysore regular anal receptive intercourse and uh, typically the findings on the anoscopy have been presented which are very classical feature of a genital human papilloma virus infection which will turn out to be uh, if you happen to put glacial acetic acid in that area then it turns them white visible areas which is an indication of hpv infection now a 60 year old malnourished individual is presenting with a lesion which is a classical feature of ekithima gangrenosum which is a classical feature caused by the pseudomonas is what need to be remembered the eeg recording is showing k complexes and spindle shape actually we should remove the spindle and k complexes all that we should remove and give you ecg only you are not very sure eeg what you will be sure and there is a chance also you will come out of exam hall and say hey that ecg was there no very special ecg was there four five waves are there which need uh, have you understand suppose if you tell to your fiance or girlfriend 
सो शी विल से हा इसको ई सी जी और ई जी भी मालूम ले इसको शादी करे तो इसको पीजी कब आएगा नर्सिंग होम कब बनाएगा सो सो दट इज द रीजन वी गेव दट के कॉम्प्लेक्सेस एंड ऑल दैट सो दैट यू डोंट गेट कंफ्यूज स्टेज टू नाउ वेड यू सी डिजोज डिसलोकेटेड लेंस सो वी आर ऑलमोस्ट डन विद इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन लेट्स क्विकली रन थ्रू द सिंगल लाइनर्स उटलेटरपति मीन if somebody is in a intensive care unit for a long period of time he had been on ventilator care then he develops a kind of a polyneuropathy which makes him to become ventilator dependent is what need to be basically remembered now um a patient had been on highly active retroviral anti retroviral treatment and uh, the cd4 cell count done one month ago was 550 cells plasma viral load is less than 50 and uh, the rest of examination is unremarkable then uh, what is the most likely diagnosis in this given case so if you take nrtis what are the important class effects the side effects which are specific for the class of nrtis They can lead to peripheral neuropathy, myopathy, pancreatitis, lactic acidosis, and hepatic steatosis. Once more, doctor, all antiretroviral drugs, right? Hindu is asking a question, sir. For SVT, the treatment of choice adenosine is not given by IV, na? Is it? So. we'll come back on route of administration uh yeah so nrts so all antiretroviral drugs please review side effects mechanism of action a4 uh, what is it um the fusion inhibitors etc etc then hypomagnesemia is often associated with hypocalcemia and also hypokalemia what is the important rule about hypokalemia if a hypokalemia is not resolving continuously in spite of giving potassium replenishment don't forget to get the magnesium value evaluated and quite often there is a coexistent hypomagnesemia that makes the hypokalemia to become resistant to get treated that is the most important principle you should not basically forget a 32 year old female who has been treated for infective endocarditis of the aortic valve and uh, the heart rate is recorded as 36 beats per minute uh, and uh, what is the most likely diagnosis for this given clinical scenario it's a classical case of the valve ring abscess which lead to development of uh, a clinical presentation as given now chronic heart failure of all the drugs it is a bit of locker bisoprolol is known to decrease the mortality is what you need to remember a baby is there on the ventilator and uh, blood gas is showing ph of 7.3 pao2 is given and alveolar arterial oxygen gradient you are asked to calculate if you don't know the formula huh? if you pray lord rama huh? in the exam hall right like bhakta ramadasu nothing will happen doctor only hey it's gone the video is getting uh, ups and downs right right you will do one thing we'll try with the other uh, channel we will take a break and then uh, shift the channel right wait so how do you calculate alveolar arterial oxygen gradient fio2 into atmospheric pressure minus ph2o a blah 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 formula is there please go through that huh? 